just two weeks, students across Ireland will be heading back to school under new COVID-19 measures and still with uncertainty over what that will look like after almost six months spent at home. Naturally, children might be quite anxious at the prospect of this new way of learning with parents wondering how they can reassure them. Parenting expert Mary O'Kane joins us now to provide some of her tips on how to manage our children's concerns and your own at this time. I should give you your official title, make you Dr. Mary O'Kane, <laughs> rather than just, <laughs> you didn't go to college Mary, for nothing. Mary's back. <laughs> Come here, the, I assume there is a risk in all of this that if parents are tense, even if the children aren't, yeah they'll subconsciously pour that into the kids over the coming weeks. Yeah, we do, Anton. And when, when our children are faced with anything the unknown or anything that they potentially think might be unsafe, they look to us. They actually take the lead more from our behaviour than from the facts of the situation, how we present them. You know when they're talking about even how you speak to somebody and they often say it's your demeanour is more important than the words out of your mouth? Yeah, why have you got that face oh. on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. But for children, it is hugely important. So it is really important that we present things as calmly and as confidently as we can. And it's not easy. This time of year, normally, we are rushing around, we're getting the copies and the school bags, and it's excitement. Some parents are dying for them to get back, and others are thinking, oh, the end of our summer. But it's actually quite a positive time. But this year, definitely, it's 2020 has thrown everything once again into this strange state of the unfamiliar and the unknown. And the unknown is scary. But that's the thing, because in most of the situations where you want to look like you know what you're doing with a child, you do know what you're doing. You're able to give the answers to the questions and settle everything. Yeah. Whereas we're hitting a lot of, well, nobody knows, mm -hmm. there is no answer. That's very hard with small yeah. kids. Very hard. And funny, Anton, it can help to focus on the things that we do know. Now, I put out a thing on my Facebook page last night asking parents, how are you feeling and what do you know so far? And some came back saying, we've heard nothing. Some said the schools are pushing our date of starting back. Others had actually quite factual information. So for the parents who have information, you'll very factually share what you know. And don't avoid talking about it. You know, we sometimes think, oh, you know, I, I just won't, I will say nothing until the day before. <laughs> and then I'll just say, oh, you're going in tomorrow. Oh, no. Try to start telling them, for, uh, particularly the parents who have some information, we know they're going back. We're not sure exactly what form it'll take. If you know your child is going to be in a pod or whatever, tell them that and say to them, I wonder what that'll be like. What do you think? And just get them gently thinking about it, but not in a case of, oh, it's going to be pods and we don't know what's happening because you're, you're really going to terrify them. Mm. And if they ask something and you don't know, that's fine. You know, children don't mind if we don't have the answers if we just tell them that. You know, we actually aren't sure at the moment. As soon as I hear from the school, we'll, I'll tell you all about that. At the moment, we're not quite sure yet. And what about those parents then that don't have that information forthcoming from the school? What can they say to their children other than, I just don't know yet, I just don't know yet? What can you, what can you use to reassure them? Can you say, well, you're going to the same building and the same teachers are going to be there and it will be the playground. You won't play with everybody, but you'll be able to play with some of your friends, that type of thing. I'll still be bringing you to school in the morning. You'll still have your lunchbox. The, the things that'll definitely, you know, yeah. we're sure going to have them. Reassure them of that stuff. That's exactly it, Kira. We'll just swap seats. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> definitely no, not. But no, that really is it. You know, talk about what you do know. When the world feels unsafe outside, a child needs to know that they have safety in their most you know, central processes around them. So if you're saying, OK, this is what I do know, I'm calmly explaining to you what, what you will be familiar with. Also remind them that back in... Was it March? When, uh, 12th of March, wasn't it, when everything shut down? You know, back then, we really had no idea how this would happen. We had no idea how school would work, if we would have to do stuff online. But look how well we coped. Look what happened. Try to remind them of the positives. I don't mean to diminish parents' fears, because I'm really aware that an awful lot of parents, particularly a, a parent who might have a child at home with an underlying issue, teachers, you know, if a teacher is living with an elderly parent who has an underlying health issue, of course they're anxious. You know, that's completely natural. So don't dismiss that either. It is absolutely natural that we are anxious. Can I ask you one, though, which is, is particularly tricky? How do you balance how much responsibility you want the child to take? So let's say the child is going back to school. Do you 
do you try to explain to the child how to socially distance, what behaviour is expected of them? Because not every parent will have total faith in the school or the crash that the child is going back yeah. to. Yeah. Or is that a, a lost cause? You may as well not bother and it just stresses them. Oh, no, Anton. You know, I always think from when they're this high, it's amazing. When we talk to them in really simple terms at their level, what they take in, I was talking to a preschool practitioner about this. A lot of the crashes are back already. I mean, we must remember that. There's an awful lot of our educators who've been dealing with this for weeks and weeks now. And this one girl was saying, she, on this post, she was coming back saying, can I just reassure parents? I have children from preschool right through in a crash to sort of older children. And she said, you would be amazed how good they are about hand washing and they're, mm. they're so aware of what they need to do to protect themselves. Because they're, they have been doing it. They for have. the last couple of months, our children, haven't they? Have. They have. We sometimes underestimate them, um, that they really do know what they have to do, and they are very good about it. I think if we perhaps had a little bit more information, if we knew more about cleanliness, I'm sorry, schools are not particularly, I'm going to be shot here, but they're not clean spaces. I mean, they're, they're not necessarily. But as parents, I think if we were more reassured about the, I know we're hearing this funding is happening, but how much is actually going into cleanliness? Do we have enough teachers to replace when, I mean, in primary schools, if a teacher is out sick, if they have a sniffle, normally they put children in other classes. They can't do that now. Mm. How exactly are the pods going to work? A lot we need parents, further guidelines. We really do. We definitely do. A lot but, of parents actually are concerned, Kira, with the pods for the younger children. They want to know their children are going to be in a pod with their friends. Now, to a school, it might be divide them up. To a child, that is huge. Their friendships are hugely important in terms of those attachments, of and we need that to balance the anxiety. So that's a big one. Um, we're talking about parental anxiety, and then we'll talk about the children's <clears> anxiety in a moment. And I just want to get this viewer's question in because, as you said, <clears throat> parental anxiety is definitely not to be dismissed. Mm. This uh, viewer says, I'm personally really struggling with a return to school. I do suffer from generalised anxiety disorder. I have two boys. My eldest is 11 and has ASD. The youngest is eight with dyspraxia. The whole pandemic has been very difficult for the family. And this viewer says, I am terrified of the thoughts of sending my children back. Yes, I, I think what this fear has hit on the head is there are so many families for whom somebody might have an underlying health condition, uh, another member of the family has, and the decision to send your children back is terrifying. It absolutely is, and we have to acknowledge that. What I would say to her is, um, say the child with ASD, also think of the strengths, because particularly for a child like that can be very good at actually following guidelines and following rules and following routine. So don't forget their strengths. And for parents who are feeling very anxious yourself, it is actually very important that we try to nearly sound off with our friend, with our partner, get all that anxiety out, get as much information from the school as you can and try and present the facts calmly. But any parent who is really concerned about a particular child, go back to the school and check what supports have been put in place for my child. I need to feel confident about what's happening. How do you explain to a child if you're doing something different than the other parents? So that let's say the schools reopen or the, the creches are back and you decide, no, I'm not sending my child back. Now they then know, well, little Sean is back and Deirdre and all the rest. How do you explain we do things differently or we've made a different choice about mm, what to do? That's an interesting one, Anton, because I think a lot of parents are actually, not a lot, some parents are considering, actually, I'm thinking of homeschooling, I'm thinking of keeping my children separate, I'm not ready to do this for various different yeah. reasons. I suppose, in one way, be as honest as you can at a, a child-friendly level with them. You know, each family has to make their own decisions about important decisions in life. Lots of children are homeschooled, and at the moment, I feel in for our family situation. Can I say one thing, though? Don't tell your children. I'm doing what's right for you because I love you and you know that family over there, well, they don't really care about their child sending them back. Please don't do that to your children. You, you make the decision. We're all very different. We're in different circumstances. I'm doing what's best for my family, but please don't tell them that the decision somebody else is making is wrong. What can parents say if they have children who have been suffering from anxiety oh. and perhaps have actually enjoyed the pandemic because yeah. they've been at home, they've been in a safe space, they've had their parents around more than ever, yes. and now they have to return to what for them has always been a scary environment that's just got scarier. Yeah. 
There's That's quite difficult. a few of those, Kira. So exactly as you described, they've been off and they thought, ah, everything is great. Parents are telling me, my child was so anxious, I've seen their anxiety go down. With those children, it's really important already at this point to start slowly pushing them outside their comfort zone because it is going to be a struggle going back. There is no doubt about it. And there's a danger as parents, when we're, when we're dealing with a very anxious child, avoidance is usually their go-to mechanism. It's fight or flight. And most of us aren't fighters. Most of us are, you know, flighters, get me away from this. And when we do that, we get, the, we get the feeling that this is great, this has worked. Like, I remove myself from the anxiety, I'm calm. But you can't have them retreat into their home, into their room. They can't retreat away from the world. So it's really important that we express confidence, we show empathy for what they're feeling, but we express confidence. And we, if I had a child like that now, I'd be getting them to go on a play date with their friend get them to the playground, get them, get cousin over to the garden, get them slowly, slowly taking baby steps to go back. Mm. But Out from under your wing, basically. Yes, and, and you say to them, I can see how you would be anxious. It's been a long break, but I'm so confident because I know you can do this. I've seen you cope well with lockdown. I've seen you cope well with these other things. You know, express confidence in them. Build them up. Yeah. All right, Dr. Mary O'Kane, thank you, as always, for all of your advice. We're going to head over now to the Virgin Media News Hub. Here's Siobhan Bastable. Good morning. Representatives from Meat Industry Ireland are due to appear before the Oireachtas Committee on COVID-19 today, where they're expected to defend the meat industry's response to coronavirus. Outbreaks in four processing plants in the Midlands have led to restrictions being reimposed in Kildare, Leash and Offaly. It comes as 40 cases of the virus were reported last night, with one further death. The Taoiseach will meet with the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson at Hillsborough Castle in the north today. It's their first meeting since Micheál Martin became Taoiseach. Mutual concerns around COVID-19 are set to top the agenda, with the economic impact of the virus and ways to control outbreaks to be discussed. They'll also discuss Brexit, including the continuing negotiations between the EU and the EU, with the UK and the EU, with less than six months to the end of the transition period. And Kamala Harris appeared with Joe Biden as his running mate for the first time last night after the Democratic presidential hopeful asked her to join his campaign to take on Donald Trump in the upcoming U.S. election. Kamala Harris is the first woman of colour to take on the role. The two appeared together as running mates at a campaign event in Delaware last night. Now well, let's catch up with sport. Here's your... Thanks, Siobhan. PSG are into the semi-finals of the Champions League after producing a stunning comeback to beat Atalanta 2-1. PSG scored a last-minute equaliser and then a stoppage time winner through former Stoke City player Eric Maxim Chupo Motting to break Atalanta hearts. Leinster player Jordan Larmer says it's going to be weird playing games behind closed doors when rugby is due to resume here on Saturday week. First up, it's Leinster against Munster at the Aviva Stadium. And the U.S. Masters will be played without fans at Augusta this year. The rescheduled golf major will take place in Georgia from the 12th of November. Time now for a final look at today's weather with Alan. QuoteDevil.ie can save you money on your home insurance, fan insurance, car insurance or life insurance. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. Thank you very much, Jaren. A very good morning to you. Well, it is a cloudy start and we are going to see showery rain in many parts of the country. Some heavier bursts with a risk of thunder at times, especially in parts of the south. Now, it will be drier to the north and we are going to see temperatures quickly getting up to between 16 and 19 degrees. Throughout the afternoon, showery rain will continue with some thundery outbreaks. Now, we are going to see some sunny spells developing, especially across much of the east and north, but it's going to be a very muggy afternoon, a top temperature of around 24 degrees. Throughout the evening, it's going to be a cloudy night with more showers in parts of the south. They'll move into parts of Leinster, much of the north and northwest staying dry, but temperatures staying around 16 or 17 degrees. That's your weather outlook. For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote.